Okay, good afternoon. My name is Siboni Somoyo. I'm the Deputy Director General for Research and Development uh, for Biosciences, looking after livestock genetics, animal feed, and animal health at the International Livestock Research Institute, based here in Nairobi, Kenya. Would you tell us how now livestock is being affected by climate change? Maybe we can start on the conversation from there. Yes, um, we were here to talk about livestock and climate change. Uh, livestock is affected by climate change uh, through issues like uh, you know heat, heat stress, and therefore that affects their productivity. Like the dairy cows, when they are under you know heat stress, they would give you less milk, as an example. But they also affected through floods. During floods, we've seen communities moving and carrying their chickens and their goats. So flooding and droughts, uh, droughts are also a key uh, impact on livestock they, because it, it, there is reduced the grazing for the animals. Animals have to walk long distances to find feed, but some die in those droughts and the flooding. But there's also limited water in droughts. So all those are impacts negative impacts of climate change on livestock. Yeah, we know that livestock is a very crucial part, especially in the African culture. Generally, not only maybe in Kenya, but generally in South Sudan, we see it, uh, it's a part of the negotiation in uh, bread dowry. In other countries, we see it's a source of food. Yeah? What are some of the negotiations that you, see, you want to be discussed on the COP28 regarding livestock? Um, so at COP28, we would like to uh, bring to the the negotiators to continue to highlight that livestock are important for livelihoods in Africa and therefore they are a resource that should be uh, you know kept and facilitated or managed in a manner that they continue to be productive but also you know contribute to environmental health as you say they are important for food for income they are an asset, they are like a bank for our communities. So we need to be able to, to manage the livestock in such a way that they, they continue to be productive, but in a, in a way that also the environment is, is uh, sustained. So we, there are ways of uh, better management of livestock through some climate smart practices. Like we need to be sure that they have uh, adequate feed, good nutrition. There are some grasses that can be, can be used to feed the animals so that they are in good condition for good productivity, where you get more uh, production per animal. Like you keep uh, animals that will give you maybe three, four, five liters of milk. So it's really focusing on pro improving productivity in a, in a sustainable way. What are the, some of the challenges that you face when presenting these particular ideas on the COP, on the ne negotiating table? Because we, we know that sometimes they are discussed on the side events, yeah, but yeah. not mostly found on the main table. What are some of the challenges that you experience when you want to present some of these challenges to the main table? Yeah, so uh, some of the issues that keep coming up is um, some global narratives that tend to generalize uh, certain issues. For example, you'll find uh, a push that would say, oh, livestock contribute to, to greenhouse gas emissions, so it's a, let's, let's reduce the numbers. Let's remove the, li the livestock from the earth so that we can save the planet. So there are those kind of uh, statements that if, you know, those are not accommodating other realities that we have here in Africa where people are not uh, getting enough animal source foods. They are not even getting the bare minimum that is required for their daily intake, including, you know, milk, eggs, meat, especially for the children. It's important that they get these uh, nutrient-dense foods for their own uh, good health and their own cognitive uh, you know, abilities. So those, so the message here, even the negotiators, when they are in the on the table, they need to bring these nuances and remind the people that not 
one size fits all. It's important when we are bringing uh, recommendations that we, we realize that in some regions, livestock are more than just uh, for, you know, they do more than uh, greenhouse gas emissions. They, they contribute so much more. And people need this for their own survival, for their own cultural uh, you know, benefits included. Yeah. So thank you so much uh, for talking to thank us. You.